Our call to worship this morning is from Psalm 30. Hear, O Lord, and be merciful to me. O Lord, be my help. You turned my wailing into dancing. You removed my sackcloth and clothed me with joy, that my heart may sing to you and not be silent. O Lord, my God, I will give you thanks forever. Please stand as we sing of God's glory with hymn number 550. remain standing and turn to page 165 for the liturgy for baptism and we are pleased to welcome into our church family by the sacrament of infant baptism Ava Grace Burris who's the daughter of Samuel and Alicia Burris she was born January 30th 2016 she is the granddaughter of Larry and Martha Burris and Russell and Eileen Lenius In grace, God called and chose the people of Israel and established with them a covenant. I will be your God, and you will be my people. In that relationship, they were to be freed from sin and become a blessing to all. Then God came to us in Jesus Christ and fulfilled that covenant for all people. Through Christ's life, death, and resurrection, 
God made for us a new covenant of grace. We bow before you the joy of God, which you claim the promises of your covenant. Our Lord Jesus Christ instituted baptism as a visible means of entry into the new covenant. Baptism is a gift of God. In this sacrament, through grace and the power of the Holy Spirit, we are united with Christ, are cleansed by his saving work, enter into the fellowship of the church, and are called to a life of faith and willing obedience. Those of you baptized into Christ Jesus, how were you baptized? Into his death. We were buried with him. In baptism, children also share in the benefits of our Lord's redeeming work through God's grace and the faith of parents and of the church. For God's promises to us and to our children. And for Ava's parents. As you present yourselves before God in this congregation, we call upon you to profess your faith. Do you believe in God as your creator and loving Heavenly Father, and Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, and in the Holy Spirit as your comforter and sustainer, according to the Holy Scriptures. I do. Lord, make us one with all your children as we profess our faith, saying, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son of our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and then born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under conscious violence was crucified and died in the grave. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, And again for the parents. Do you in this faith turn away from sin, evil, and selfishness in your thoughts, words, and actions? And do you intend to participate actively in Christ Church, serving God all the days of your life? I do. Relying on the power of the Holy Spirit, do you promise to lead your child by prayer, instruction, and example toward that time when she can, by grace, confirm her faith in the Lord Jesus Christ? and commit herself to the life and work of the church. I do. And for the entire congregation. Do you receive and affirm this child of God as a member of this congregation and accept your obligation to love and nurture her in Christ? We do. Please be seated. God for the gift of water with which you created to given us as a sign of life. We recall with gratitude how you led your people from slavery to freedom through the waters of the sea and we rejoice in the gift of the Holy Spirit at the baptism of your son in the waters of the Jordan. We praise you for opening up to us the way of eternal life through his death and resurrection. Now send your spirit upon Ava who receives the water of baptism today so that she may become a living, growing, and active member of your church, rise to new life, and be led and nourished by your word and sacraments, and share in your eternal blessings. 
give the, to these parents your wisdom and strength that with love and understanding they may guide to Christian maturity the young wife entrusted to their care. Ava Grace Burris, into the death of Jesus, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now, through God's grace and the pouring out of the Holy Spirit, you have been brought into the covenant. Therefore, live, yet not you alone, but Christ live in you, and the life you now live. Live by faith in the Son of God who loved you and gave himself for you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Sharon Sullivan for our board of elders are going to present Ava's baptismal candle to her parents. This is a reminder that today is the, the day of birth into her life of this faith. And uh, that candle is to symbolize that as well. Our young people come up and join me. Ava seems so awake. I wouldn't be surprised if she doesn't tell us years from now. She remembered every minute. <laughs> yeah. Oh, goodness. You guys just seem far away. Thank you, Claire, for sitting by me. Let's scooch this way. There you go. So, um, can anyone who is here, oh, got a couple more coming, for Bible school, explain what these large cone-like objects are that are up here? Anyone want to do that? Well, the theme was caves, so those are either slag tights or slag bites. I, don't, I never remember, but anyway. <laughs> anyway, to... So we decorated it like a cave, and that was just part of the decorations. <laughs> yes, I get confused on which is a mite or a tight. So, um, so there, we had a, a person who was coming in, and he kind of uh, was trying to help us. He was, uh, had some trouble finding his way around in a cave. Who was that? you remember what his name was? Huh? Yes, Ben. Yeah, Clark Cavern. Uh, he, we had skits, and that was performed by our own James Hero. He was fabulous, wasn't he? Yeah. So the neat thing about the theme for this past week to share with the congregation is it was talking about, uh, we had some wonderful music talking about Jesus being the light of the world for us. And uh, 
boy, oh boy, you will probably be hearing these songs sung all over town <laughs> throughout the summer because they're, they're staying with us. I know I, this morning as I was getting up, I was singing, he is the light, light, light. Well, you don't want to see it. But, um, um, but um, it, it's kind of appropriate today because our, our scriptural lesson today is, is kind of a, a, a tough story. It's about a person who was in real darkness and how Jesus was the light that came to him, the only light that could come to him. And um, I just uh, am so grateful for all the people who worked so hard to make this Bible school opportunity such a wonderful opportunity for so many young people, um, and uh, to plant those lessons in our hearts. So whenever we do find our play, ourselves in dark places in this life, we remember that we have the light of the world with us. So thank you for all, coming, all of you coming up, and it's good to see you. See you later. At least in the, in the years I've been here, that's the first granddaughter-grandmother duet we've had. So thanks to uh, Claire Fight, to Marilyn Potts, and to their accompanists who ran out already, and Ellen Betcher. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> 
Would our ushers please wait on us as we worship our Lord with our tithes and our offerings. pray. Gracious Lord, as we bring you these gifts and our offerings for the morning, we have much to talk to you about and to pray about. We give you thanks for a successful VBS week, for all the joy and the music and the learning that went on. We would raise up to you Lee Peterson. We are thankful that he received his transplant we ask that you continue to be with those who care for him and with him and grant him continued success and healing. We would ask that you be with and watch over the Hobson family as they continue to mourn the loss of Naomi. We are mindful of the people of Orlando and around our country who are suffering after that act of terrorism. We would ask that you be with all those who are affected and that you would touch the hearts of people around the world so that they could live together in peace 
and get over those angers and jealousies that come when we look at our differences and realize that we are all created equal and that you love each of us equally. We are grateful for the baptism this morning and we would ask that you be with little Ava who so happily endured being sprinkled and the organ music and shown off to the congregation and that you continue to bless her and that she continues to have a happy life. We ask that you be with her and her family. We come to you in the name of our Lord and Savior with all these thanks and requests. Amen. Please be seated. reading this morning is from Luke chapter 8, starting in verse 26 and ending in verse 39. They sailed to the region of the Gerasenes, which is across the lake from Galilee. When Jesus stepped ashore, he was met by a demon-possessed man from the town. For a long time, this man had not worn clothes or lived in a house, but had lived in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell at his feet, shouting at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? I beg you, don't torture me. For Jesus had commanded the evil spirit to come out of the man. Many times it had seized him, and though he was chained hand and foot and kept under guard, he had broken his chains and had been driven by the demon into solitary places. Jesus asked him, What is your name? Legion, he replied, because many demons had gone into him. And they begged him repeatedly not to order them to go into the abyss. A large herd of pigs was feeding there on the hillside. The demons begged Jesus to let them go into them, and he gave them permission. When the demons came out of the man, they went into the pigs, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When those tending the pigs saw what had happened, they ran off and reported this in the town and the countryside. And the people went out to see what had happened. When they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom... The demons had gone out, sitting at Jesus' feet, 
dressed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who had seen it told the people how the demon-possessed man had been cured. Then all the people of the region of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them, because they were overcome with fear. So he got into the boat and left. The man from whom the demons had gone out begged to go with him, but Jesus sent him away, saying, Return home and tell how much God has done for you. So the man went away and told all over town how much Jesus had done for him. It's been a busy and full week here at the church and out in our community as well. You, I just can never uh, be in this sanctuary with 130, 40 young people singing their hearts out and, and not just be overwhelmed and blessed as we were with Vacation Bible School. It's been a wonderful week. Baseball and softball and soccer matches for the kids are in full swing. There's crossroads run. And the YMCA had their summer kickoff, and things are busy down at the Boys and Girls Club. There's been weddings, graduation parties, and finally some warm weather has come so we can all sit outside on our porches and our decks. Yet I confess that amid all of these wonderful and life-giving activities, I've had a sense of unease throughout this week, a spiritual itch that I just couldn't figure out why I couldn't seem to scratch it. It wasn't until I sat down with this text this morning, you know, we follow the lectionary, um, certainly not a passage I would choose to pick on a day of a baptism of such a glorious and wonderful child. Um, But God chooses these texts for us. And it was when I sat down to look at these verses that I finally put my arms around why with all of these great and fulfilling activities that are going around me and in my life, that I was still feeling sadness and distress. Jesus confronting this man filled with evil spirits exposes an important truth that I think all of us need to consider. Nothing here tells us how long this man with these spirits had been in this community of Gerasenes, but... We know that the members of the community had at some point tried to deal with him. We were told they'd even restrained him so that he would not be able to harm others and probably so he would not harm himself. For any of us who've been around a person who's experienced seizures, we know very often we need to restrain them so they're not a harm to themselves. But at some point, either he escaped or the community released him from his bonds and he went to live among the tombs. This community in a sense, allowed him to go, allowed him and his legion of demons to lurk in the cemetery, never gone, ever present, lingering. Life among the tombs. Jesus no sooner steps out of the boat, coming off the water, and he confronts this demon. This is so amazing because you think of all the years, the months, however long it was that this community continued to live with this. But when the Lord of light arrives, there is an immediate confrontation. He brings light to where the darkness cannot have power and he demands that that evil name itself. And the man, the demons respond and that he was possessed here and it was described in a very interesting fashion. He said as a legion of demons, an army of demons. Of demons. Now, several times in the Gospels, we find Jesus confronting evil spirits. And usually, it is a single spirit which is tormenting a person. But here we have someone whose suffering is described as being on a massive scale. His afflictions were too many to be named. Massive evil. Massive pain. And we friends, unfortunately, have had another taste of that this past week. When we walked into worship last Sunday morning, we were under the assumption there had been 20 people killed in Orlando and walked out of church to find out it had been 49. How many of us have watched those names of those murdered scroll across our TV screens? How many of us have seen the pictures and the bright faces of those who've been taken from us, cut down by hate? How can we wrap our minds around the suffering of those 49 lives and then add the agony of their families and friends. 
and then add the dozens of wounded and their families and friends. And then add those who have survived and witnessed that atrocity and their family and friends. And then those police officers who had to charge past the wounded dying on the floor to confront and stop more death and their families and friends. And the heartache of the firefighters and the first responders and add to that their family and friends. And then the nurses and the doctors who fought to save any life that they could save and then their family and friends. And then the LBGT community and the Latino community and the city of Orlando and, and our entire nation that, have been, that has been robbed of these lives. The truth of life in a suffering and broken world is that there is such evil, such massive suffering that occurs, that has occurred, and unfortunately until our Lord returns and claims us as his own will occur again. So the story of the Gerasenes demoniac is a contrast between the one true hope that we have in this broken and sinful world and the actions of fearful people who let evil lurk. Jesus cast out that evil. In that instance, they begged to be sent into a herd of swine to, be, to escape being sent into the abyss. And you have to love this Middle Eastern ancient irony of this story because they still ended up there. They thought they would be better in the pigs, but the pigs turned and drowned themselves, and therefore they ended up where they were going anyhow. People may feel sorry for those poor pigs who were collateral damage to this man's healing. But what we need to keep in mind is the truth of this account is trying to convey to us. The result of Jesus healing this man and driving this great evil out is that the people of that community rejected him. They rejected Jesus and they sent him away. Two obvious reasons for this. The first is stated very clearly, they were afraid of him. They are afraid of what he had done. As a community, they learned to live with their demonic forces. They had attempted to isolate it, to give it space, thinking that they were controlling it, at least creating the illusion of that so that they could continue on with their daily living, tamping it down in their minds and hearts while it was wandering around out in those tombs. But then the power of God comes to their community in Jesus, and he disrupts and disturbs everything. For the Lord of light and love will not tolerate the evil in this world that we may choose to ignore. It leads us to the second reason why they sent him away is probably simple economics. The price of the pigs and their judgment would not be tolerated to get rid of the evil and compensate them for the healing of this man. I don't have a problem, I don't need to draw lines to make connections to how these things continue in our sophisticated and modern world, how we accommodate the evil of this world, how we shrug our shoulders and hang our heads and wonder what we may do. Over thousands of years, sinful human nature does not change. But that's not what matters. The crowd that sent Jesus away, we can think about them, but our attention needs to be on the one person that did what needed to be done, the man who was cured. For it is in him we find the power not to accommodate, to not surrender to the evil, the hate, or the violence. The man who was cured, he wished to follow Jesus. He wanted to go with him. Just think of that. Think of the, how he must have felt to be liberated from all of that. And he wanted to go with him. But Jesus said, no, you need to go home and you need to tell everyone what God has done for you. Friends, the change begins in us. For by his stripes we are healed. By him we are made whole. By him our, for, our sins are forgiven. And because of this, we choose not to live in fear. And we choose not to be filled with hate. People with faith, not armed with weapons or hate, have stood for centuries against the evil of this world by remembering and confessing the Lord of love. 
and, cl- and his claim on them, a claim that even the worst of this world cannot take, a claim of love to live with love. Even when every reason in the world would tell us we should be filled with our own hate and our own vengeance. You know, friends, it was a year ago this week that a gunman walked into a church in Charleston, South Carolina, and gunned down nine people in Bible study. In Bible study. Close to 200 people filled the pews of that AME Emanuel Church on Wednesday night. And they gathered together and they prayed and they studied. The Reverend Anthony Thompson led the service, and he got up and he read the exact same passage that was read a year ago when that man walked in and opened fire. That night, those verses had been read by his wife, Myra Thompson, who was among those killed. Like Abraham, change has to start in each one of us, Reverend Thompson said to the congregation. We can't just believe God and expect mountains to move and walls to come down and wars to be won and our lives to be changed. The change has to start in you and me, he told them. Despite all that pain and that sorrow and that anger and that loss, one of those family members who had lost a loved one stood in the pulpit and they prayed for forgiveness, spoke of forgiveness. As he prayed out, the names of each of those who had been taken, the choir sang behind them, I give myself away. He offered prayers for the families of the Charleston Nine, and in keeping with the witness of Christians who were following Christ and choosing not to live in fear and anger and hatred, he prayed for the family of the man who had murdered them. We are responsible for our hearts and our souls, and how we live. If those people who have paid that price could stand as a witness and testimony to us to live the radical love of Jesus Christ, can't we? Can't we? But like that healed man, it is not enough for us to simply go home in gratitude. We have been given a responsibility to bear witness to Jesus and to call the world away from hate and fear. What a blessing it is this day to welcome a new member into our faith family and to be reminded that life by life, life by life, we live and witness to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Life by life, we change this world and we shall not surrender to the hate. We shall live in the love and light of God. Amen. Please stand as we sing together our closing hymn. You will find it on page 787.
now may the grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and abide with you, both now and forever. Amen.